Welcome to the Anatomy of Trap Pop. So you wanna me to cut it off. A new series I'm doing once a month to break down the distinguishing sonic characteristics of a genre and build it step by step with you. The first and most important part of any song, at least in my opinion, is the kick drum. And in Trap Pop, you're probably gonna wanna look for a kick that is mid-focused, has a round attack, and is very quick. So with that in mind, I chose this kick drum. Now looking at our snare drum, the other half of the core of our groove, we want something that's probably gonna be high pitch, quick, and snappy or splatty. With that in mind, I took three samples and put them together to make this. Next up is the hi-hats, and especially coming from the trap world, the hi-hats in that genre are super, super bright and high pitched, airy and shiny. So with that in mind, I took this hi-hat sample, and added a ton of high end to make it sound like this. So now moving on to more ambiguous things, we have the percussion or Foley percussion that you might add into a track, which is something that you could easily find in the trap pop genre. These are things that help distinguish it from just sounding like kick, snare, and hi-hats, and adds an extra layer of complexity to it. With that in mind, we're gonna look for something that has an ambiguous sound, has a sense of intrigue to it, and is likely going to be Foley based. Putting all that together, I took a few of my own samples and created this. Next up is pads and flux. This is the harmonic content of our song. And the interesting thing about this genre is it's not completely predicated on having straight chords playing. It's usually more vague and watery and flowing while still maintaining harmonic content. The first subsection of this are chord-based pads. These aren't essential, but it helps ground the chord movement and the sonic movement of the song in the track without it being too direct. So my chord-based pad is this. Now to counteract that and make sure that we maintain the watery, vague spaciousness that we want from a trap pop song, we need to have a couple layers that have similar feels but aren't directly saying the chords out loud. With that in mind, I added this pad layer on top. And this pluck that is arpeggiating some of the key pitches of the section. Next up, the most important part, it's the 808. It's the only thing that really matters in these kinds of genres, the 808, the kick drum, and the vocal. And with that being said, the 808 needs to be intense, forward in the mix, and it needs to drive the groove forward. So this is what I came up with to complement the pads and plucks from before. Now the last thing that isn't vocals is sound effects. These are things that kind of at this point replaced crashes. A traditional crash symbol is now likely going to be a few different effects blended together to have a similar impact on certain hits and moments in the song. Overall, we're gonna be looking for something that is quite dark. It's probably gonna have a lot of effects on it and likely some kind of heavy reverb on top. So to punctuate a couple of hits in this song, I added this effect that I put through a bunch of reverb and layered it with these crashes. Now we're up at the vocal, and if you are a music theory person, just to be super quick with it, we're probably sticking with pentatonic note choices as the basis of our melody. Typically, as far as vocal performance delivery, we're thinking things that are not gonna be chest voice or belted, probably singing closer into our mix or head range. And to bring in the trap rap influence, you're probably gonna be doing something that's very rhythmically based and not a ton of long, drawn, held out notes. So now with that being said, here's the melody that I came up with for this section. So you wanted me to cut it off And you're begging me to break right down Now we have a lead vocal, that's great, but we wanna add some of the classic effects that are gonna be put into this genre. One of them, of course, is the pitch down octave vocal. So you wanted me to cut it off And you're begging me to break right down And a very powerful thing that I hear in a lot of modern pop productions, but also coming in the trap world, is that they will have the main vocal do a part and then it'll split off into four leads all at the same level to kind of do a, the B section or the response to the melody. And it creates a really interesting production in and out feel to it. So with that being said, I had the last line of the vocal melody saying as a group vocal and it sounds like this. Get it in your head, never laying in the bed now. Now take it all, put it together and you get a trap pop chorus. So you wanted me to cut it off And you're begging me to break right down Playing on your knees, saying pretty please In your head, never laying in a bed now So you wanted me to cut it off And you're begging me to break right down Playing on your knees, saying pretty please
So that's everything you're gonna need to know in order to build the basis of a trap pop song. Now, as you're seeing these other videos pop up, it's important to also say that these are the foundational elements and skewing from these base foundations is what can make a song intriguing. So don't use this as a set of rules, use this as guidelines to get started and then experiment and make it your own from there. I'm sure you're subscribed at this point. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you in that next video.